Hey guys, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and thank you for the continuous support, phone calls and suggestions. Today we have a lovely vlog for you where we plan to look into the parish of St. Elizabeth and look at it at how is it that we plan to outline a framework that can be used to transform the livestock sector in Jamaica by building on farmers' capacity and doing technology transfer. Um, so far I can say I'm pretty inspired to see some of my work actually translated on farms in the field and that inspiration is enough for me to get up at morning time very early to run out and visit our farmers. Um, this is an example where a farm was practicing bad feeding programs, a bad feeding infrastructure, and we had a before and after situation, and we've seen significant improvements in the animal's health and the animal's productivity just by simply investing in your feeding infrastructure. So let's go, guys. So, with Mr. Bent, who having him kidding season, bought a bittersweet moment for him. About um, seven. Last um, four, oh. um, so it's about um, seventy percent success. So what what what's the complications you having? Complication well, um, mostly the when you're delivering at night, and no one around to assist because they, they, they find out that the kids are very large coming out. Mm -hmm. so we have to be assisting the mother. So Mr. oh, so you having a lot of you having large kids, so you having um a lot of bird complications. What's, what's the birth weight on this animal? Um, 10 pounds. 10 pounds, well, nice. And it's a single or? Single. Single, okay. And we find out that the mortality mostly in the doubles. When you have, oh. when you have been twins, you have been those mortalities. I, I can tell you that you're not the only farmer with this issue right now. A couple of farmers will calling me saying, hey, um, they're getting gigantic kids and it causes a lot of complications and they're losing animals. So there is something that we need to do farmers regarding um, managing our genetics with you know twin drops triplets we should also ensure that we're practicing the best feeding program during the last trimester of these animals and ensure that we're feeding properly not overfeeding but should be fed in the right amount how, how, what was the birth weight on these six pounds hi guys are really nice yes Oh nice, heavy kids. Let us begin our vlog today where we speak on fodder budget. And when we speak of fodder, we look into the materials required to feed our animals. A very common question asked is how much feed do I need to feed an animal, Khalil? Or how many land is required to raise a certain amount of goats? And that's why we should always develop our fodder development budget. And so we went to St. Elizabeth and we know Mr. Bent, that farm out there who's doing an outstanding job with his operation, who has now decided to rehabilitate some lands that he have and invest in a pasture. But he plans to go into a fodder bank system using the local species found in the area of St. Elizabeth. And he wants the best recommendations on how that he could develop a pasture program and also the best management protocol for a system like this. And I really and truly respect this because this is what ensures that you'll have a sustainable ruminant system once you have your fodder system in place. So let's look into how is it that we could actually achieve something like this. Well, first of all, you want to call somebody like me who would come and give you a pasture audit. And within this pasture audit, the first thing I look in, into is the grass species that you have. Because each grass species will differ in the amount of yields. And the yields will determine what you'll have, what we call the carrying capacity. As in this, it could tell you the amount of forage you can produce and the amount of animals you can actually sustain from this type of system. Then we look into number two, we're looking to the nutritive value of the pasture of the grass and also determine the cutting interval. And for number three, I then look into telling you to do a conductor soil test for us to develop the proper fertilizer program and a management protocol because sometimes pastures might need to be brush cushed or brush cut or they need to be ripped. And this, I believe, is the most sustainable approach regarding pasture management, especially for with especially within the tropics. Let's take a deeper look into the grass species. For example, here at Mr. Bent and Mr. Faces Farm, they have what you call Panicum Maximum, aka Guinea grass. We know it. It's a very high yielding crop, high biomass. Um, it's a very low maintenance crop. We see it grown anywhere right along the roadside, and it also has fast regrowth. So, this is an excellent 
grass species for our ruminant systems. And it's actually a variety that can be found locally, but we do have improved varieties or additional varieties. So for example, there is a different variety within parishes. You have the Panico Maximum Riversdale found in the St. Catherine area. We have the Panico Maximum Maconi, which is very common in the South region of St. Elizabeth. And we have the new and improved variety being pushed out, um, the Panico Maximum Mombasa. So they're all the same grass, but just hybrid versions of each. And this will allow us now to determine why they use it important to give us the carrying capacity. Let's just cut a research that we did on the pangola grass looking at if urea bombardier product that we had could improve yields what was proven that we could increase dry matter yields and we could even make more money per acre per hectare based on using a fertilizer program that assists with the production of more grass so after we have determined the estimated yield from our pastures, we want to look at the estimated consumption. We could say uh, one goat will eat 600 pounds of grass over 180 days. This could equate to 12 bales of hay. Uh, we would require 3.5 bags of grain, a hyper concentrate, and this would help us to determine our fodder budget. And this could help us also determine the feed cost per head. In Jamaica, this would be around $15,500 to rear an animal for six months using that type of system. And we should also take into consideration the differences between dry and wet grass because moisture content does influence feed intake. And a pasture system will definitely be a bit different because we have 10 goats per acre if we're using that type of system compared to a semi-intensive or intensive system. So practicing sustainable agriculture, I'll always recommend. Do a soil test. Um, this could assist us in developing the proper fertilizer program to give your pastures the best yields. Thank you guys for watching this video and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.